Uh, so here are the first set of notes for stoichiometry. Um, I'm going to go through the whole thing, get as much as I've done as I can in the first 10 minutes, and if I have to divide this into two, then I will. Uh, okay, first of all, purpose of stoichiometry, and remember, pause this, write down what you want, and you can hit play and listen. Uh, but the purpose of stoichiometry is so we can figure out, calculate how much of one chemical we'll need to use to generate a specific amount of another chemical, or, you know, figure out how much chemical we'll make from, you know, the reaction of another chemical. The biggest thing is, is that you have to have a balanced equation because the whole thing about stoichiometry is you use the mole ratios from the coefficients in those balanced equations. So most of your stoichiometry equations are going to be the three-step variety where you're in the mass of one chemical and you're converting to the mass or volume of another chemical. You can be in volume of the first chemical too. Um, we're going to break it down and we're going to start right here with the one-step problems where you're just converting from moles of one thing to moles of the other using the mole ratio and then we'll move up to two steps and then eventually up to three steps. But this is the most realistic type of calculation that you're going to do with stoichiometry. It's the kind of calculation that I do whenever I'm trying to figure out exactly how much of each chemical or what molarity of each chemical I need to use to get things to work the way that I want them to work in y'all's labs. So first of all, one-step problem. Uh, the moles to moles uses the coefficients from the balanced equation, so it is super important that you have the correct balanced equation before you start trying to do stoichiometry. This first singular step serves as the basis for all stoichiometry, because stoichiometry is all about converting from one chemical to another, um, and this step right here is the only way to do that. So this will be the reaction that we work with throughout this entire set of notes. So I'll go ahead and write it down somewhere that you can see it. Um, if the reaction begins with 13 moles of Al2O3, how many moles of aluminum will be made? Uh, so all you do is start with your 13 moles of Al2O3 and convert that. Sorry, my line went a little crazy. Now, to know what goes in this block, we've done stoichiometry before, you know that some kind of a conversion factor goes here. Well, when you're converting from moles of one chemical to moles of another, you use the mole ratio from up here in the balanced equation. And since we're trying to relate aluminum oxide to aluminum, our mole ratio is four to two. So you would write that as a conversion factor. For every two moles, of Al2O3, we are going to get four moles of aluminum. Now remember, when we put this in here, we want this to be able to simplify down to where the moles of Al2O3 are gone. So since we've got moles of Al2O3 on top here, that means we want this moles of Al2O3 in the bottom in the next block, which means that the four moles of aluminum have to go in the top. Whatever you're starting with is what's going to go in the top left block and whatever you want to end with is what's going to go in the top right block. So that's how you can know, you know where to put things and what you're eventually trying to get to. So now we get to cancel stuff out uh, or simplify as the math teachers say. So moles of Al2O3 go away. We can simplify the 4 and the 2 so this reduces down to 2 this goes down to 1, and so we end up with the only math that we actually have to do is 13 times 2, so this is equal to 26.0 moles of aluminum. Next example that I have, the reaction ends with 28 moles of oxygen. How many moles of Al2O3 did you begin the reaction with? Or you could probably make more sense of this by saying if I wanted to get 28 moles of oxygen, how many moles of aluminum oxide do I need to react? So starting here at 28 moles of O2, so that's what's going to go in my first block. And then I need to convert it to Al2O3, so that's what's going to go in my second block. So my mole ratio is going to be 3 to 2. And since I have moles of O2 on top here, then I want my 3 moles of O2 to be on the bottom with the two moles of Al2O3 to be here on the top. So now I get to simplify. Moles of O2 cancel out. Don't really have much that I can do with the numbers here, so I'm just going to have to multiply across the top. Now I know you don't really have to do this on this one, but this next thing that I'm about to show you will help. 
uh, whenever you get the more long, drawn-out stoichiometries. Multiply across the top and get a number. So 28 times 2 is 56. And then multiply all your numbers across the bottom and get a number and plug that in right here and then divide these two numbers. That way you don't get tripped up by order of operations issues. So 56 divided by 3 is 18.7 units are moles of Al2O3. Um, how many moles of aluminum did you also end with? Same thing. Um, now I could use that 18.7 that I just calculated up here. But when you're given the choice, you always want to use in your calculations the numbers that you were given, not the numbers that you calculated. Because what if, I know that you wouldn't get this wrong, but what if you did get this number wrong and then you plugged in a wrong number down here? Well, that guarantees that this number is going to be wrong. So starting with my 28.0 moles of oxygen, if I produced 28 moles of oxygen, well, my mole ratio here is 3 to 4, so for every 3 moles of oxygen, I'm also going to get 4 moles of aluminum. Simplify down. Again, not much that I can do with the math here. So I end up with 28 times 4, which is 112, divided by 3, which is 37.3 moles of aluminum. Alright, so what if instead of moles to moles we add one more step? I'm going from grams to moles. Well that's a two-step problem. You can go the other direction too where you go from moles to grams. Uh, this time still gonna have the mole ratio, always going to have the mole ratio, that's never gonna change. But now we also contain molar mass for whatever substance it is that we have the mass of. Remember, whoa, I don't know what just happened there. Hey, that was kind of crazy. Um, so this molar mass here, we can find, remember, from the periodic table. And so there's the cute little picture for that one. You convert from mass of something to moles of something using the molar mass from the periodic table, and then moles to moles, moles of one thing, moles of another is from the coefficients. So, example again. Remember we had the reaction of 2Al2O3 decomposes to form four aluminums and three oxygens. So if we begin the reaction with two grams, grams Al2O3, how many moles of O2 will you end up with? So we started with two grams, so that's what's gonna go in our block, our first block, top left. This is what we need to have in our last block, top right, so we need to work our way there. Well, since we're starting in the mass, mass of Al2O3, first thing we need to use is the molar mass of Al2O3, and if you plug that into the calculator, you get about, I think it's 102, if I remember correctly. Of course, I don't have this one figured out before I started with. So you take 26.98 times 2 plus 48. 101.96, I didn't say 102. So 102 grams of Al2O3 per mole of Al2O3. So now that we're in moles, we can convert to moles of O2 using our mole ratio from up here of three to two. So for every two moles of a L two O three. We are gonna get three moles of oxygen. My timer just went off, so this will be the last problem I do on this set of notes. And then we get to cancel out. So grams of Al two O three, moles of Al two O three. Uh, looks like I can cancel out some twos right here. And then what I'm left with is three divided by one O two. So three divided by one O two gives me zero point. 0294 moles of oxygen. And that will be it for this set of notes. Um, pick up part two right where this one left off.